Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. Today we will be playing with the dishwasher and the washing machine. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, because your support really means a lot. And now, let's get started with the video. So, as the title says, today we will be playing with the dishwasher and the washing machine. There are a couple of ways that you can integrate your dishwasher and washing machine, unless you are one of the lucky ones that already has Wi-Fi integrated inside dishwasher or your washing machine, and has the integration inside Home Assistant. For the rest of us that are using dumb washing machines or dumb dishwashers, there are a couple of ways on how you can integrate them inside Home Assistant. One is to use vibration sensor. This works for the washing machine, but I wouldn't consider that to be 100% accurate. At least with the vibration sensor that I have, one from the Xiaomi. Second option that you can also use is to use door window contact sensor, so you can track when the washing machine doors are open or closed, which also can sometimes lead to false positives or false negatives. In this case, it will be false positive, because if you forget something and reopen the door, before the machine starts, it would be triggered as a cycle. So, yeah. Third option is to use smart plug, something like Shelly Plug S, that I'm using myself, to track the power usage of those devices. And let's look at the differences between the dishwasher and the washing machine. If we look at the power usage for the dishwasher and washing machine, you can see that there are two differences. First of all, dishwasher looks like it is really pulling up much more power than the washing machine. This peaks above 2000 watts, while the washing machine goes to somewhere around 1500 watts. But as you can see, there are some small consumptions at the beginning. Then we have a smaller consumption in watts during the washing cycle and these are the things that we have to be careful if you look closely my dishwasher drops in the middle of the cycle to somewhere around three to five watts this means that if i will be doing a tracking of my dishwasher through power meter i a have to find the lowest point in the power usage for my dishwasher in this case this is three watts and B, to be on the safe side, I have also to make some kind of a timer to track if the state is below, let's say, 2 watts in my case, for a period of, let's say, 90 seconds, or you can put even 5 minutes. After the power usage of dishwasher drops below 2 watts for a period of, I don't know, minute and a half, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, this depends on your dishwasher, but also your preferences, then we'll be using this state to trigger that dishwasher has ended. Same thing goes for the washing machine. When it starts, it starts with a very low power consumption of around 8 watts, then it jumps to 1500, drops to 93, jumps to 900, and then slowly drops. The lowest point for my washing machine is power consumption of 1 watt. What does 1 watt of usage mean? It means that the washing machine has ended, but it is still in some kind of standby mode. So what I can do, I can track if the power is below 2 watts, that means that the washing machine itself has ended, but I didn't push the button to turn it off. What about the start? As we can see here, both machines have usage of around 3, 5, 9 watts, up to 8. So if we use following rule to start the cycle or to detect the cycle has started, we can say that, for example, if power usage of dishwasher or washing machine is above 2 watts or 3 watts for a period of 5 minutes, it means that cycle has started. The big question is, do you really want to automate your dishwasher or washing machine? Well, yes, but the answer is also not that simple. First, we have to detect differences between the washing machine and the dishwasher. My washing machine has also dryer inside itself, so for me, it is really impossible to detect if it's working as a washing machine as a washer and dryer or just as a dryer 
and this is a problem to detect the usage of detergent or the pods for the washing machine. So anytime I detect the cycle has finished, meaning the washing machine has ended, I also use that automation to count downwards the number of pods that I have in stock. Second thing, for the dishwasher, we do not have that problem, because dishwasher is a dishwasher. Unless you also use your dishwasher to just, let's call it like that, rinse or wash up your dishes without the detergent. In my case, I don't use it like that. That means that every time the dishwasher is turned on, I will use one pod to clean it. So what can we do with all this information and all those automations? First of all, we can track the number of times the dishwasher was turned on or off, or number of cycles for dishwasher. Then we can use this data also to trigger the counter downwards for our stock of detergent. And third thing is that, you know, every dishwasher and washing machine also has to be cleaned inside. Some do it monthly, some do it by number of cycles. We can use the cycle information or how many times the dishwasher or washing machine was running to get a notification that it's really a time to clean the washer or the dishwasher. I said washer and dishwasher just too many times. So at this point, we know how we will do dishwasher tracking and we also know how we will track washing machine. Let's look at what else we have here. As you can see, this is my history and the history shows the information about the dishwasher pods and washing pods because I'm not using a liquid or powder detergent. For both washing machine and dishwasher I use pods. Why? Because it's much easier to use and B, for home assistant this really helps to track the stock because sometimes you could pour a little bit more power than the next time, same goes for the liquid detergent, so it would be really hard to determine what is the current stock of your detergent. Let me jump to my configuration. As you can see here, I've added two counters, one is called dishwasher pods and the other one is called washing pods. Based on the status of those, I still haven't done it myself, but what you can do is you could create alert or automation that would warn you if the count of the pods has dropped to, I don't know, 5 or 10. And yes, this is the first time I have ever used counter as an internal home assist integration, and this really is a great integration for this case. What counter does? Counter creates a counters that can count either upwards or increasing or downwards or decreasing. You create a minimum and a maximum value. You create steps, so for us it will be one because we are using only one detergent or one pod per cycle. And then you can use counter service, such as counter increase or counter decrease, to decrease or increase the number that you are counting. So for us it's great. There is also additional option, counter reset that allows you to reset counter back to the original state that you defined when you created counter. So for example, my washing machine detergents, the pots, are usually packed by 35 pieces. On the other hand, my detergent for washing machine is usually packed around 50 pieces. So for each one of them, I created the default value, and if I reset those values, I will be returning to the original value. Okay, this was a really long intro, let's get started with the integration. In this video, I will be using internal automation editor inside Home Assistant plus helpers from Home Assistant. If you want to see how I've done it, you can check my GitHub repository. I will be posting a link to the code for all the automations and all the input sensors and counters I created for this automation. First, let's go to configuration and we will create a couple of helpers. First two helpers will be counters for the pods, one for the dishwasher and the other one for the washing machine. Add helper, counter, dish, washer, pods. For the icon, I will be using MDI dishwasher, because yeah, there is a dishwasher icon. Minimum value will be zero. Maximum value for the dishwasher, let's say that it can be 100. Initial value will be 100 when I reset it. And the step size is one. You can leave this box ticked on, and that way the counter will restore the last known value when you restart your home assistant. Let's press create. 
And next, let me create the washing machine pots counter. Material design icon will be washing. Washing machine. Minimum value 0. Maximum value this time will be 70. Initial value will be 70. Step size 1. And we will be restoring the last known value. Let's press create. So we now have two counters. What I will also be creating, maybe not use this time, but in future I could use it, is input booleans. Dish washer running. Dish washer alert. And another helper, toggle washing machine running MDI washing machine alert create so we have counters dishwasher pods and washing machine pods and we have booleans dishwasher running and washing machine running okay so this is it what else you will need is dishwasher and washing machine devices that track power consumption. I have here two Shelly plug S's, one for the dishwasher and the other one for the washing machine. So let's go to configuration, automations. You do not have to create automation for the start of the cycle, so we will be creating just one for the cycle end, where we will be A, decreasing number of detergent pods, and B, we will be receiving notification or sending notification. Let's add automation. Create new empty automation. We will call it dishwasher ants. For the trigger type, we will be using numeric state. Power for dishwasher. Let me find it here. Dishwasher power. When it drops below 2. And what we can also add here is the duration. Let's say that we want it... To do this only after it has been for 1 minute and 30 seconds in this state. And now we have to create actions. So we want two actions. We'll call service counter decrease and we will be selecting dishwasher pods. This means that after we get successful trigger with the power dropping below 2 for 1 minute and 30 seconds, we will call service counter and we will be decreasing number of dishwasher pods but also we want to create notification and for this i will be using telegram message dishwasher finished and we will save it let's create additional automation for the washing machine, once again we will be using numeric state for the washing machine, power when it drops below 2 watts for period of 0, 0, 0, 1, 30, 1 minute and 30 seconds. We will call a service counter decrease for the washing machine pods and additional call a service notify message washing machine done open door to prevent mold. For example, or you can do whatever you want. Let me just fix typo here and let's save. So we have created two automations. If you want to be tracking the status of your washing machines, what you can do here is also add additional action. Call service. Input boolean. Turn off. And washing machine running. By adding this here, 
we can now track if the machine is running, washing machine is running or not. For this to work, then you would also need to create two additional automations, one for the dishwasher and one for the washing machine, to track when the power usage goes above 2 watts, for example, and there you would trigger input boolean turn on. That way you can have automation that would be used just for tracking if the washing machine is running or not. Let's save this. So what can we add here? We can add two things. Counter washing pods and counter these washing pods. Save. Next time you run your system and it finishes, because we are triggering this only on the finished event, the number of dishwasher pods and washing machine pods will be decreasing. So what happens if you by mistake, I don't know, turn on and off machine and you know that the pod itself wasn't used, there is also option to click here and increase or decrease the current number of the pods. As you can see, we cannot go above the number that we declared to be the maximum value. So if you are like me and you buy two packs, make sure that the maximum value here in the counter is at least as the total of the two packs of the detergent. If you, for example, fall down to, I don't know, 80 and you buy a new pack, you can just come here and press reset. And this really is it. The next step for you can be, of course, to create automations if the counters drop below the threshold. This value is all up to you. So, for example, if the pods drop to below 10 or 5 or 1, you get the notification that you must buy a new pack. The second thing that you can do, of course, is something that I mentioned before, is to count the numbers that the washing machine was turned on or off, or cycles. You can do this by creating additional helpers, such as counters, and there set the maximum number of cycles you have to do on your dishwasher or washing machine to initiate the cleaning procedure, whatever the cleaning procedure for your dishwasher washing machine is. As I said previously, in the description of the video, I will be posting a link to my GitHub repository when you can find those automations. Well, not maybe all of those automations, but there you will always have up-to-date automations and all other things that are related to this video and washing machine slash dishwasher integration. But there is one specific device for the dryers. I haven't seen it for the dishwashers or washing machines, but for the dryers, if I have read correctly, it is used to detect if the dryer is working or not. And this is it for this edition of Home Assistant How To with Bearded Thinker. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any kind of question, comment or suggestion on how to improve this, please contact me on the Discord or leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell button and I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.